But now it's time for a very special interview. Sunday was World Ovarian Cancer Awareness Day. Um, ovarian cancer patients in the UK and abroad united to organise a global campaign to raise awareness of the disease in younger women. The campaign launched on May the 8th, which was Sunday, and features women with ovarian cancer and the excuses they told themselves before they were diagnosed. A new online symptom checker identifies the most uh, the 10 most common symptoms of ovarian cancer and aims to help people understand in 60 seconds whether they need to seek medical professionals. I spoke to the brilliant Daniela and Katie who have both had ovarian cancer very young and are part of this and the wider campaign. So firstly, World Ovarian Cancer Awareness Day was the 8th of May, so it was on Sunday just gone. So yeah. how did that go? Uh, well, it was fantastic coverage. Yeah, uh, so we've, we had um, an amazing response. Uh, we had um, a billboard takeover in, uh, in Piccadilly Circus um, and had a couple of people from um, the ovarian cancer community come down, people who actually uh, were up on the billboards themselves. So that was really, really nice to see. Um, and then we also um, kindly had donated um, 341 billboards across the UK, so across major cities in the UK as well. So um, from a UK perspective, um, amazing coverage. This year, we really wanted to focus on making young women aware that um, ovarian cancer can happen. You know, I was 32 when I was diagnosed in 2020, um, underwent some chemo, and um, yes, yeah, thankfully I'm okay now. But we thought the thing that we wanted to try and get across was for people to just understand what the symptoms are and that it can happen and to watch out for them because I think a lot of the time it's passed off as something that um, it's just something normal. That's just the way my body is. So um, the symptom checker went, has gone really well, actually. I'm just having a little look online now to see how many people that we've had that have come across it. And there's over 10,000 people that have accessed the checker. Um, and I think we've got nearly 4,000 people that have gone all the way through to the end and have, have checked their symptoms. So um, for that, I, I'd say that was a success. Um, and we're really pleased with it. And uh, it seems that it's continuing to gain momentum momentum even after uh world of our ring camps today so yeah pretty, pretty good yeah great because i was going to say like my next question was you know i'm 25 and i wouldn't even know what the symptoms are so how can we find this checker because it's it's so scary to think that i don't even know you know what the symptoms are mm. yeah yeah it's crazy um so if you go to it's ovariancancerchecker.org, you'll be able to have a little look on the page. Um, you, we can see other people's stories, um, mainly from young women as well. I mean, I, I was surprised at how many people that were, you know, in, in, in their early 20s, even in, in one of the support groups, which is where uh, Katie and I actually met. Um, so, yeah, if you go to ovariancancerchecker.org, the symptoms are, are, are in there and you can, any sort of niggles that you've been having, you know, please do speak to your GP and just mention them because, um, yeah, it often gets misdiagnosed with other things. So it's worth being able to take control of your own health um, by being able to present those, uh, those things to a GP. It, you know, Daniela mentioned before that there's... Um you know, the focus of this campaign was really about um, raising awareness not only of the symptoms but also the fact that those symptoms ha can happen to younger women. So one in nine uh, women in the UK who are diagnosed uh, with ovarian cancer under the age of 45, which I think sometimes you think ovarian cancer is, you know, perhaps a disease um, that impacts older women. I think what we, we really wanted to kind of debunk that myth um and and demonstrate that uh that you know sometimes the, the symptoms can be quite subtle and particularly if you're a young busy person uh, both Daniela and i have, have quite similar stories in the fact that it was really easy for us to kind of put the symptoms so symptoms being you know perhaps um 
uh, going to the loo a little bit more often, feeling a bit bloated, um, feeling like you've got a stomach cramps. They're all individually easy symptoms to kind of put to one side or sort of put down to a busy lifestyle. Um, but, you know, if they're happening for more than two weeks, um, you really need to get those checked out. And that's that's the purpose of this campaign is that we really wanted to kind of bring those things um, to the forefront. Yeah, and I think it's absolutely amazing. Do you think as well with the pandemic, do you think is there, is, do you know if there's like a big backlog as well? Because I know there is with um, gynaecology and all of that. So do you think there's a big backlog with um, kind of people going to check their symptoms or, you know, um, having that kind of treatment? I, I would absolutely say that uh, in, uh, so I don't have the specific stat for gynae, but I would think um, that the overall backlogs that the NHS have seen in terms of uh, cancer um, backlogs will absolutely apply to this. And because, as we were saying, the symptoms can be easy to just put to one side or just to think, do you know what, I'm just going to leave it. It's, it's not a big deal. Um, and so I think, you know, with the context of the pandemic and, and people just firstly not having, you know, as easy access to their GPs because you've got to you know, do everything over the telephone or, or it's really difficult to get an appointment or you just you don't want to be a bother, right, in the, in the middle of a pandemic. Mm. Um, you know, I, I, I do think that that is that is a worry the the other thing to say as well is um you know having a smear test do not pick up ovarian cancer um so that will absolutely help check for cervical cancer um and and changes um from a from a cervical point of view but but it doesn't pick up on ovarian cancer so i think that's just another thing just to um to make people aware of I think it's just, just about being aware and making sure that you are communicating to your GP. And, you know, most of the time, it, it, it probably won't be ovarian cancer. But if you are that person that is unlucky enough to receive it, it's about being able to find it sooner rather than later. Um, so me, myself, I was stage 2B, um, but I actually only found out because um, we were um, we were trying to conceive and it wasn't happening. So they did some scans and then they were like, right, bam, there it is. Um, whole world sort of uh, went upside down. Um, but I think if, it, if people are aware of these symptoms, then it means that they're going to be getting checked out earlier because once you start to, to progress to, to the later stages, stages three and four, um, correct me if I'm wrong, Katie, but I believe there is no, no stage five, um, then your outcomes are significantly better than if, uh, if it had gone undetected. So, so my experience actually um, started when I was at university um, and I was uh, in the middle of taking my exams and had really, really bad um, shooting pains in my tummy. Um, but because I was at university and, and, you know, truth be told, probably didn't have the best diet in the world, was leading a bit of a party lifestyle, um, you know, I, it was really easy for me to just put that down to, um, yeah, just not having a great or leading, leading a very enjoyable um, mm. student lifestyle. Um, the, I then had uh, surgery um, because what they found was um, some borderline tumours, so that, that at the time wasn't classified as being um, cancerous. But then uh, 17 years later, so in 2020, just as the, the pandemic was kicking off, I had the same kind of shooting pains in my tummy again and that was when they did discover that I did have um I had borderline tumors had returned um and this time unfortunately because they they'd kind of been um been there for a little bit longer they had spread a bit further and so um yeah that was when I got my diagnosis of of, of low-grade serous ovarian cancer um so so yeah uh, and I guess the, the thing to say is you know getting a Getting a diagnosis, um, and, and to your point around, you know, scaremongering, that's absolutely not what, what we want to do. But what yeah. we're really passionate about is raising awareness of the symptoms. I think, you know, uh, people are getting more and more familiar with, you know, checking their breasts and, and going yeah. and having smear tests. But, you know, when it comes to, when it comes to gynae, when it comes to, you know, things like ovarian cancer, it's, it's 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 a it's an awkward one to talk about, isn't it? We don't know 
we don't know these things and so just opening up that conversation and 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 sharing and, and sharing our stories and, and generating awareness just helps those conversations to happen. Um, and I found it really interesting, actually, um, even just at work, you know, having shared my story, I've written a blog and, um, you know, doing interviews like this, sharing our stories, the number of women who've um, come up to me and said, oh, do you know what? I've been meaning to go to the doctor. There's just, you know, my yeah. parents have been really just really off recently or you know i've just had a little bit of bloating and and i haven't it's just not it's not going my tummy's not going back down again and you know just encouraging them and and giving them the safe space to have that conversation i just really feel like that's you know something that is is so important to do and, and open open up that that line of communication and encourage people to to just go and get checked as we've said no, I completely agree. And it's been an absolute pleasure. Um, and I really hope if just even if we just help that one person um, that might be um, experiencing some symptoms and just to go and check it out. Um, Katie, you said you got, got a blog. What was your blog if anybody wanted to go and, you know, have a read of it? Yeah, so my blog is um, is on Medium. Um, and if you look me up, it's Katie Wilkins seven 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 on Medium. So um, and it's the story of... of um, Gosh, I can't remember. Was it like a uh, su- survivor of a, of a varying cancer? So you can find me there or on Instagram as well. Um, my Instagram is ktg77781. Very catchy. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. And Daniela, how can we find you as well? Yeah, so, um, I mean, I think the best place for people to go to is the ovariancancerchecker.org, which is where all of the information is. Um, We've got several women's stories. I know we've touched upon some of the uh, symptoms in the time that we've been speaking, but that will dive into them a lot more um, and be able to make people aware um, of, you know, if they are experiencing something that isn't their their everyday normal, uh, just to go and get it checked out. So, yeah, ovarian cancer check would be where I'd love people to go. Amazing. Well, Daniela and Katie, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for your time. And um, yeah, it's really opened my eyes as well. And we need we need more people like yourself. So I really champion you both, especially after, you know, something traumatic that you've been through, you know, coming out and trying to help people um, on their way as well. It's, it's, it's a really um, honourable thing to do. So thank you so much both for your time. I've really appreciated it. Bless you. Thank, thank you, you so much, much for having us. That was Daniela and Katie, who are both very young and had ovarian cancer, raising awareness for the younger women to go and check symptoms. And that was ovariancancerchecker.org, which is a new symptom checker, which identifies the 10 most common symptoms of ovarian cancer and aims to help people understand in 60 seconds whether they need to speak to a medical professional.